today we wanted to do a little something a little different. Um, I wanted to talk with Mother, Dr. Jean, about um, fresh revelation that's coming to the body of Christ in this season, and some maybe some words of advice from this Mother of Israel, uh, Mother in Israel, that she might impart to you as ministers of the gospel. Uh, and you're a minister of the gospel, whether you're in the pulpit or whether you're yes. uh, working a secular job, you're a minister of the gospel. Um, that you might hear words of advice from years in the ministry and continuing revelation from the Spirit of God. And so uh, today we're just going to talk a little bit and just see what the Lord is saying at this time. And we've asked the Lord to anoint your ears to yes. hear that you may receive what God is doing afresh in these days, these days where the awakening of the yes. Lord Jesus Christ is beginning yes. and flowing over our nation and our world, yes. for which we are privileged to be a part of. So let's get started. So mom, let's talk about um, you and my dad were in ministry for years and years. Yes. So <clears throat> did a lot of things, done a lot of things, been a lot of places. What do you feel is the greatest um, advice that you could give to ministers today? Well, one of the first things that we've got to understand, and it's something that I spoke of for many, many years and many times, there is no thing that I can do without Him. Without Him, I can do no thing. Without Him, no one can do anything that's going to really last and really work. But with him, we can do all things. And the thing that I would say, as much as anything, the work of the gospel, and the gospel is good news. We've been called, every one of us, whether we're in the pulpit, as Debbie said, or we're in the pew. But we're called to minister good news. We're called to reconcile the world to Jesus Christ. And to reconcile the world to Jesus Christ, we must tell them the good news of salvation. We must tell them about Jesus. It is and it will always be about Jesus. It's not by things that we do. It's not by things that we can say but it's by the Spirit of the Lord within us that rises up and we know that we know that we know we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So to begin with, the main work that we have is to understand the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, which has been imparted to us and to tell the good news to people, to reconcile them to God by the love of God. It's not what we do, it's not what we say, it's not anything about us, it's all about Him. Um, I'm reminded of a minister I heard say one time that the Lord asked him to speak every message about Jesus. And Jesus is in the entire word from Genesis to Revelation. And as he started speaking about Jesus, the more he spoke about Jesus, the more the revelation came about Jesus. So I would say that our thoughts and our hearts are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, through the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. So... Today, what would you say is the prevalent message that is coming to the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ? I believe we're knowing more than ever the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we sang about it for years. We prayed about it for years. We talked about the grace is sufficient. And I think about uh, when, when uh, the disciple was worried and, and, and uh, encompassed about and a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him. It was someone speaking into his mind. A messenger brings a message. 
and it was someone, something speaking into our minds. And we've got to understand the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ drops into our heart and into our spirit, and the troubled mind ceases because of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have found out, draws me closer to Jesus. It doesn't draw me away thinking, I can get away with anything and everything. That's not the mindset I get. The more I think about the grace of the Lord, it humbles me more and more about the grace of the Lord Jesus. What would you say to um, people because this is what I found, even in myself, when I began to hear this grace message, um, was, well, are you just saying that we can go sin, that it doesn't matter what we do? Well, it goes back to Jesus on the cross. Jesus washed away. He paid. Jesus paid on that cross for every sin everybody in this world has committed are committing and will commit. But when we find this saving grace of Jesus Christ, he washes us from those sins. He washes us from those past lifestyles as we receive him as our Lord and Savior. We are washed clean and we don't even desire. Behold, all things are are made new, the Word says. The Word tells us we are the righteousness. He traded our unrighteousness for His righteousness. What a trade that was. So therefore, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And if you know Christ Jesus today, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of His grace. And because of that, Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Those things that once um, maybe we were addicted to, uh, those things that we desired, those things that we did that was contrary to the walk of the Lord Jesus Christ, they pass away according to the Scriptures. The Scriptures tell me I become a new creation. So if I'm a new creation, I'm not going to walk in those things that displease God. I'm going to walk toward God in the light of His holiness. So you're saying that all of the righteous things that I may do count for nothing. That's right. That's right. Our righteousness are nothing but dung, as, as is stated. It doesn't count a thing for God because we're hid in Christ Jesus. When I sin, when you sin, the Lord doesn't look at us. I love this. God the Father doesn't look at us. He looks at Jesus and to see, was the lamb sufficient? The lamb that was slain once and for all, was that lamb sufficient for me and for my past sins, my present sins, and my future sins? And he says, yes, he was. The price of Jesus Christ and him saying, it is finished. That price was enough. So then we, all we have to do is believe and receive. And it tells us that in John, I yes. believe it's 629, that the works that we are to do is to believe in the one whom yes. God sent. Yes. yes. So Jesus took what I deserved yes. so that I could get what he deserved. Yes, yes. So then it's nothing that I do it's just receiving what he's already done. It's all about him. It's yes. all about him. John the Baptist said when Jesus was coming, when he was baptizing, John the Baptist said, um, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the yes. sin of the world. <laughs> Did the Lamb of God accomplish the job for which he came? It tells us, I believe in 1 John, that, uh, that he came to destroy the works of the devil. Did he accomplish that? Absolutely, absolutely he accomplished it. I was thinking this morning, as I was thinking about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, think of the worst person you can think of on this earth. Think of the worst murderer, the worst 
uh, one that d is in deceit and telling lies and working all kinds of things against God. Think about that person. At the cross, Jesus died for that person. Now, will that person be saved? He will and he can if he accepts what Jesus did at Calvary. It's coming to Jesus Christ. Jesus, God the Father, sends no one to hell. The reason people will find themselves in hell is simply because they did not receive and believe on the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's already done. Grace, grace, grace. Yes. When, when, uh, when I realized, when I heard that Christ not only died for us, but a that he died as us. Yes. Oh my gosh, that, that was just overwhelming. And, and the proof of that is that he came in bodily form like me. Yes. yes. And he died and rose again. And for all of eternity, and you used to preach this all the time, for all of eternity, Jesus is in the form yes. of me, not, not Debbie Brewer, but in the human form. Yes, the man. For eternity, the man is seated, seated at the right hand yes. of the Father. Yes. A human, the human form of the Son of God. Yes. Me, he made the way. And it is just, it, it is like when you begin to realize this and you begin to realize how much the church, and I hear this over and over and over when I hear certain ministers or, or go to church, it's all about what I'm supposed to do. It's all about what I'm supposed to do, but that's wrong. Somehow the church has turned the focus on us that it's about what I do and it's not about what I do. It's all about what he has already done. So it makes our works greater than the work of Christ on the cross. And also, whenever we go to the Lord over and over and over, and we do what we call repentance. Now, repent. My husband used to say this and, and, and demonstrate this. He would walk across the, camp, uh, the platform one direction and then he would say, I'm going to repent and he would turn and go another way. So repentance is changing our direction. Repentance is going towards God instead of way away from God because he paid it all. It's all about Jesus. So whenever we go before him with our sins and once again we start dredging up and bringing up all the stuff from our past, we are saying that our sins, or even the sins we've been involved in now, our sins are bigger than the blood of Jesus Christ. That's a lie from hell. Jesus Christ is enough. His blood is sufficient. The word even tells us, when I am unfaithful, he is yet faithful, for he cannot deny himself. What a wonderful, glorious thing that is that even when I am unrighteous, I am yet the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I stand up ever so often and look in the mirror and say that to myself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, not by my righteousness, totally in him, in his righteousness alone. Well, and I think there's a um, uh, confusion among many Christians between confu confession and repentance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That repentance, as you were talking about, is that, that repent or the steering wheel that we turn and go a different yes. direction. We have a, a change of mind. Yes. For example, if I think uh, committing adultery was okay and I'm doing that, but to repent means that I have a whole change of mindset. I see that that mm -hmm. is not right anymore and therefore I, uh, the Lord empowers me to stop that because I am forgiven and I am um, covered by His grace. That when I'm in sin, I'm fallen from grace. Yes, yes. But when I'm in grace, I'm going to be righteous with God and following after yes. Him. Confession, we get this confused about, uh, and confession has nothing to do with our salvation about sin. What does the Word say? The Word says to believe in our heart and confess, not sin, 
but confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. There's my confession. I'm confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's greater than any sin, yes. any yes. sin yes. that I've committed. Yes. Yes. I haven't said that, but the Father has made that clear. When Jesus died on the cross, he said it was finished. It was done. Mm -hmm. It was done. Nothing else. He didn't go to hell and suffer anymore yeah. because the cross was enough. And it's still enough today. I'm not having to pay penance. Yes. I'm not having to walk around sorrowful that I'm not forgiven, that, oh, I've got to walk a certain way in life because of how bad I was. If I'm doing that, I'm not, I am not mm -hmm. valuing the price yes. that Jesus yes. paid because I think I've got to add to it. Now, we don't think that mm -hmm. when we're doing it, but we have innocuously um, have have raised sin by yes. saying, oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And we've raised sin that like it couldn't negate the power of God. Mm -hmm. It couldn't negate the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh no, it's just the opposite. So when I value what yes. he has done, I don't have to add to it. So no matter what I've done, no matter how horrible I might have been, it's covered. Yes. Yes. It's covered. Yes. Not because I'm looking for a way to get out of it. He accomplished it. It's washed away. Washed away. Not covered like the blood of bull and goats, washed. which they did in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament. He comes and he washes away our sin. Yes. I love, I heard um, Creflo Dollar talk about this. In the Old Testament, and this is where most of us have lived, if I do, God will. Mm -hmm. If I do, God will. If I do, God will. But the new covenant, God said, I heard Creflo say this. This was so wonderful. He said, God said, I will no longer let what you do determine yes. what uh -huh. I can or will do for you. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. So even when I've been uh, horrible, even when I haven't had enough faith, it tells us in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. For the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. In Timothy, it tells us that if I'm faithless, he is faithful. So I, I am definitely a woman of faith, a woman of the word. But in, in the, the um, word of faith movement, per se, if I can use that, Faith, uh, let me speak for myself. I can't speak for anybody else. Faith became a work. Mm -hmm. I got to get enough faith. I got to have enough faith. And it was all about getting uh, me, me, me. Uh, and again, it's all about me. That's what we tried to make it. And we take away the wonderful graciousness of our Father who freely gives. Man, that's the thing that doesn't yes. want you to take advantage of it. <clears throat> That humbles yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. That humbles you yes. to know what he's done. Mm -hmm. I heard recently uh, a preacher on television, and he was talking about that, that uh, he came from a drug background, and he had a friend, and this friend was ready to get saved. And so he started talking to him, and he says, well, I'm ready to get saved, but I'm not going to give up my partying, which meant that he wasn't going to give up his drugs. And so this minister told that man, well, then you can't get saved. I was aghast. I was aghast. How could you ever tell someone they couldn't get saved? But he said he wasn't going to quit sinning. What does that have to do with salvation? Salvation is believing in my heart, confessing with my mouth. I'm not saved because I quit stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not what saves me. I'm saved because I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. Now, once I'm saved, it is the Holy Spirit's job to convict yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. It is the Holy Spirit's job to tell me yes. uh, what I'm supposed to do. Let, let's take the example of a baby in a womb, and the baby's ready to be born. But that baby says, well, I'm gonna, I might be ready to be born, but I'm not cutting that umbilical cord. That's, mm -hmm. first of all, that's not that baby say so. Yes, yes. And once that baby is thrust out of that body, that becomes, that's not a choice anymore because that source of the umbilical cord is about to be expelled as yeah. well. Yeah. So that child has to change. So therefore, even though he thinks he's not going to do yeah. that, once we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, 
I'm a different. I'm a different yes. being. Yes. Amen. I am a different being. I'm not. I'm not. I'm no longer have a gender. I'm not male or female. I'm not of a certain ethnic group. I'm not. I'm a new creation in the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. So therefore, anything that I may have been attracted to or addicted to can drop away from me at that moment. Yes. I become a new creation. A new Old creation. Things are passed away. A new creation. So I don't look to the back. I look forward. I press yes. forward. Forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. When, uh, when Jesus was on the cross and the um, thieves were there, and the thieves were there, and the one said, um, talk to Jesus, and he said, I believe, it. well, I'm sorry, I don't know the conversation, but whatever he said, Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't say, okay, you need to go re make restitution. Are you sure? Are you sure you don't want to steal anymore? Are you positive? Jesus just said, come on, you're going with me. Today you'll be in paradise with me. We've made it too difficult. We've yes, protected yes, God. Yes, yes. We thought, oh, we got to keep people away from God. No, we don't. It's my job. To, to give and speak of the good news of the gospel, yes. then it's the Holy Spirit's job to change people. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. how wonderful our God is. So going back to what would I tell people, I would tell people to make sure that the Spirit of the Lord is just flowing through them. Rest and relax in the Lord. Let the Spirit of the Lord run. Just flow through you as you minister to people to bring encouragement or bring the good news. You're not talking to their head. There's many, many people, and this is where it goes wrong. Many people in their head say, oh, yes, I agree. But until it drops down into the heart and into the spirit of man, they don't really, it's all a mind game. But the Lord wants it to drop into our hearts. We follow him after the spirit, not after our minds thinking what I can do and what I cannot do. Just relaxing and resting in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's what we have for you today. We just wanted to share. I just wanted mom to share about this This. Um, it's it's like a grace revolution. I'm hearing it from so many different yes. people, and it is the message, the revelation that God is bringing to the body of Christ at this time. This is the message that's going to spill out of the yes, four walls yes, of the church yes. when we realize that people don't have to mm -hmm. clean up to come to God, that they just, we want to tell you of the greatness of our God and how much He loves you. That's born out in John 3.16. I would like to tell one more story that I think is just marvelous. When they brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus, he didn't tell her, well, look, you go clean up. You go do whatever. You, you, you got to get right here. And it's interesting. She was the only one caught in that adultery. There was no man involved. But Jesus took up the stone. And he was the only one there that could have cast the stone. He was the only one righteous among them. And he said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And they all turned and they all walked away. And instead of Jesus looking at that woman and saying, now looky here, look what I've done. I've saved you and now you need to do. And he, had, he didn't have that spirit at all. His spirit was, where are your, uh, your accusers? accusers? And she looked around and she said, I have none. And his words to her was, neither do I condemn you. And then he said, go and sin no more. People have to know they're not condemned mm -hmm. and then they can go and sin no more. Praise God. We hope you're blessed today by this discussion of grace, start searching the scriptures. Start understanding it's not what you do, but it's what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has done. Amen. God bless you until next time.